According to some credible research, Sundays and Mondays are the most common days for serious heart attacks. Now, the research isn't exactly clear as to why, but a lot of people speculate it has to do with the stress of the weekend ending and people returning to work. That means that your job could literally be killing you. I mean, think about it. How excited are you on Sunday night to go back to work on a Monday? If you're like most Americans, probably not very excited. So let's talk about some pretty disturbing workplace stats that cannot be swept under the rug. They're a problem for sure. So we'll talk problems, but we also need to talk about solutions. These stats really hit home for me for two reasons. First, I was once a frustrated and unfulfilled employee. At times, I really enjoyed my work, but overall, there was so much red tape and restrictions that I felt like my goals and dreams of becoming an entrepreneur we're being suffocated. So if you're feeling frustrated or just unfulfilled at work, I get it. I've been there. The other reason these stats hit home for me is that now as an entrepreneur, I have employees. Now, I don't even like the word employee that much. To me, I have a team, but I recognize that there's no way I would have been able to operate my franchises in California and Florida at the same time without a good team and same with my current business. So for me, I want to know what's causing people to feel unhappy at work so I can get out in front of it and actually build a culture and environment where people are excited to come to work. And if you're one of these people who want to make a change, well, I want to equip you with the tools and strategies to do that. Capiche? All right. So the conference board reports that 53% of Americans are currently unhappy at work. And literally over half the working population is unhappy at work. That's an issue. So you mean to tell me that casual Fridays and free pizza parties aren't doing the job? But look, this is just a surface. I started seeing some of these statistics, so naturally, I got pretty curious. And I was absolutely shocked at what I would find. For example, did you know that a Harvard Business Review survey stated that 58% of people say that they trust strangers more than their own boss? Six out of 10 employees trust some rando on the street more than the person who signs their checks? That's insane, right? Now, there could be a bunch of reasons for this, but another statistic that sure as heck doesn't help is this. A recent study by CareerBuilder.com shows that a whopping 58% of managers said they didn't receive any management training, meaning 58% of those bosses people don't trust didn't even get proper management training. Now, I'm sure we can all take a moment and look back at at least one or two bosses we've had that clearly had zero management training. And it's really difficult to work for someone like that. Now, here's another interesting fact about bosses. Leigh Branham, author of The Seven Hidden Reasons Employees Leave, revealed that 89% of bosses believe employees quit because they want more money, which seems like the common sense answer, right? Wrong. In fact, only 12% of employees leave an organization for more money. The truth is 79% of people who quit their jobs cite a lack of appreciation as a reason for leaving. And according to global studies, recognition is the number one thing employees say that their manager could give them to inspire them to produce great work. I mean, it's not that dang hard to say thank you and, and let your team know you appreciate them. Plus, it's free. So clearly, it isn't about the money as much as it's about respect and appreciation. And at the end of the day, they always say people don't quit jobs, they quit bosses, right? I remember about eight years ago, I was in a commission-only sales role as a financial advisor, so I only got paid from the revenue I generated for my company. I was always a, a do-more-than-you-get-paid-to-do type of employee. Some people are the, I don't get paid enough for that. I think that's an easy way to make sure that you never get paid for that. But I started doing these training sessions for the credit union that my investment firm had me covering, and they were at seven in the morning. Now, I lived a good 45 minutes away. So I would leave at 6 a.m. and do these trainings from stuff that I had painstakingly learned as a national speaker for Tony Robbins. I was literally a professional speaker. The management was blown away at the trainings and eventually it was just for the tellers, then it was for the personal bankers, then for the branch managers, then for the middle management of the credit union. Remember, I was not getting paid for any of this. I only made money when I generated revenue for the company. So eventually I put together a proposal for the credit union to pay me as a consultant to keep doing these trainings. Besides the fact that the head of HR was dismissive and rude about the process, they eventually voted no, not to pay me. So you know what? I stopped doing the trainings and I promise you that I never went above and beyond for that organization ever again. Actually, 
It was one of the reasons I bought my first franchise years ago, to get the hell out of there. So once again, if you feel like you are underappreciated at work, your job might be killing you. Now, of course, you can't link underappreciation of bad bosses directly to poor health. But here's a stat that directly affects your physical well-being. CareerBuilder released another study that revealed that two out of every five employees suggest they've gained weight at their current job. Now, the shocking part isn't just the weight gain as much as it is the fact that over a quarter of these employees had access to wellness benefits, but 63% of those employees didn't actually take advantage of them. So 63% of people had some sort of wellness and fitness plan available to them, and they did not take advantage of it. Here's where we're going to have to guess a little bit. But my assumption is a lot of people gain weight after starting a job for two reasons. Number one, a busy schedule and poor time management leaves them with no time to work out. Number two, the stress of the job gets to them and not only can stress itself lead to weight gain, but we typically don't make the best food choices when we're stressed out. So now you're stressed out, underappreciated, and gaining weight. Ugh, definitely not a cocktail for good health, right? Okay, so I've got an idea. Just take some time off and unwind a little bit. But wait, American workers forfeited nearly 50% of their paid vacation in 2017, and nearly 10% took no vacation days at all. According to a study by Glassdoor, the fear of falling behind is the number one reason people aren't using their vacation time. So it's like people are too stressed out to take time off because they're stressed about the thought of coming back from a vacation, so they just never leave. What a cluster. So if you're too stressed to take PTO, so you just work more and get even more stressed, then your job might be killing you. Now, okay, okay, I know it sounds like this is all horrible news and we're screwed, but here's some good news for all the single ladies and single fellas out there. According to Glassdoor, 52% of women and 48% of men find love in the workplace. Of course, you shouldn't go work for a boss who has no training and doesn't appreciate you just to go find love, but it is a nice little side benefit, I guess. And all of these statistics play a role in how much you enjoy going to work. And if you can't stand going to work but have to spend 40 plus hours per week there every single week, that will affect your mental and physical health. Now here's where you're left at a fork in the road. Do you try to land a different job with a new company? That could absolutely fix the problem because the right workplace culture can really change a lot. But for some of you watching, there isn't a workplace culture that will ever truly make you feel fulfilled and satisfied. I know for me, it didn't matter where I worked. I was always going to feel like something was missing that I wasn't truly fulfilling my dreams and potential unless I was an entrepreneur. And to be transparent, entrepreneurship comes with its own baskets of stressors and problems. But they were stressors I was more than willing to deal with. Maybe you're in the same boat. If you find yourself dreading Sunday nights and anticipation of Monday, or are you just feeling unfulfilled at work, then entrepreneurship might be for you. Now, for my entire corporate career, I was starting businesses trying to get out. The thing was, I had nine failed businesses until I bought my first franchise. I did over $470,000 in sales that first year, and now over six years later, multiple franchise locations across the country, millions of dollars in sales, and a couple of businesses later, here I am. So yes, I am a little biased about franchising. I think franchising is the simplest stepping stone into entrepreneurship. So I also believe franchising is the most proven business model in the world. And this is not from being biased. This is from the numbers. Franchising as a business model has been around since 1891. There are over 800,000 different franchise businesses and there are over 4,000 different franchise brands. And according to the United States Census Bureau, one out of every 10 businesses that you see when you look around is a franchise. Franchising is a business in a box. You get to really copy and paste someone else's successful business model. And to make it even easier, I put together a free training explaining exactly how franchising works, how to make money with franchises, and how to get started easily. Just click the link below and you can get instant access to my training on how to make money owning franchises. Again, it's 100% free. So the most natural next question is, should you buy a franchise? Now, I'm not a mind reader, but in this video here, I answer that question and walk you through the pros and cons of franchising. I'll see you there.